Is this thing on? There we go. Okay. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Basic Nerd Experience. Uh, it's your host with the most that looks like a ghost, uh, Elliot. And uh, today I'm again joined by my, uh, well, now former Observer staff because Michael and I just graduated from Broward College. And Jovan uh, been there, done that. You know, that's all news that he's been a, a BC alumni. But now we get to join hands and say, hey, we, we did all it. All things so. together. That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, anyway, so this is, uh, so, uh, I got my two guests, I got, uh, Jovan. How's it going, guys? And I got, uh, uh, I was thinking of a, I can't think of the like, killer mic on, I was trying to think of a, uh, a cool name for Mike, <laughs> but nothing, I, I don't know why, I thought, for a second I thought your name was Zach, I'm like, wait, because I was thinking of Sky High for a second, like, Zach Attack or something, but I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but we got, uh, Killer Mike. Or I guess yeah. I don't know if you let me call that, but we got Mike. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's already taken. There's a rapper named that. He'll be Killer Mike Number Two. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so addition I just want. Two. Oh, go sorry. What you say? Uh, addition to. That's yeah, he'll yeah. be um he'll be like uh, uh Dwight from the Office. He'll be assistant to the Killer Mike or something. <laughs> I'll take it. So uh, we got so today I thought we kind of just uh, just talk about uh, not only like quarantine a little well we already talked about quarantine and our thoughts but I figured we talk um, a little Star Wars because there's a whole lot that that is well we already talked a lot about the, you know, on the podcast but we can't can never get enough of Star Wars well because right. I got a little I got a little problem with Jovan because this man has never even seen a whole Star Wars movie in, I've in never which, seen longer than probably one scene. <laughs> I don't understand this. Uh, this is a. Pro- I don't. Know, I don't know. Michael wants to join in on this, or he he wants to defend <laughs> Jovan, or he wants oh. to be Switzerland, Switzerland to stay neutral. But like, I I. I I'm not. Uh, I like Star Wars. I'm not as big a fan as like people. But like, it's like I'm seen all of them. I I haven't seen some of them in a long time, and most of them are hit or miss. But like, it's just it's weird that no, like, if you haven't seen it, you know what I mean? Because uh, I don't know. Because of like, how popular it is. Yeah, it's like no. even people that don't like fantasy, seen like Lord of the Rings, and even people that don't like sci-fi, have usually seen like one Star Wars film. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I, I haven't seen any of it. And the thing is, I'm a big Disney fan. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. But Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, I've never been able to sit down and watch. Completely. Lord of the Rings, I understand because like each movie is like what three hours minimum. I get that. I completely understand why, and it's like this whole. Now, uh, the, the my argument to that to why the the length doesn't make any sense to me because I am Trinidadian Indian. I grew up in Bollywood. Bollywood films are at minimum three hours each. At minimum. They used to be long uh-huh. enough that you had intermission halfway through the movie where you can get up and go to the bathroom and you come back and the movie starts. Yeah, dude, you don't so, even know, Elliot. You don't you don't want to step into this cultural <laughs> space, all right? Oh shit. So my, you know girlfriend, what? my girlfriend's Trinidadian too, and like these movies are like they're insane, these <laughs> these Bollywood films. They are they're pretty incredible, though. Like, it's an art. It's 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 old. It's they don't really do the, the whole romantic um, musical anymore. But for the most part, wow. So maybe I just I, I'm sorry. I'm just used to the the uh, the the garbage fest that is uh, Hollywood sometimes. Because there's some. I'm I'm used to watching some terrible movies, but you know it's. it's I don't know. Is the wind okay? Because the wind wants to say something that they should say. Yeah. There's a plane passing by. Was a pl- wait planes? There's still planes going on. There. I live right next door. Well. That's okay. The, the, the wind wants to interrupt, so I'll I'll let the wind interrupt and say their piece. Oh, wow, that's a lot more to say. <laughs> you better speak up. Oh my god, it's aggressive. Yo, you get it. Alright, you done, Wind? Alright. 
I think he's good. All right, I think I think he's good. I was gonna say though, Elliot. And then, I and then like watch- a, and then like a tornado just comes right behind Joe Biden <laughs> for like no reason. <laughs> I was watching one the other night while I was eating dinner, and uh, I don't understand why Anakin so young in that movie. That kid's such a bad actor, and it's because he's like fucking four years old, dude. Like, why did they hang him out to dry like that? And I, I thought he was fine. I actually thought he was good. I, I really, well, listen. I, I, he. he he falls in love with Padme, and she's like twenty five. He's like no, five. okay, okay, no. We actually had this it's fight weird, on the podcast dude. before. No, no, no. We had this. I mean, somebody right there. Like, this, like I, we had this back on. Uh, if ladies and gentlemen, if you want to listen to the episode one review, uh, be, be more than likely to. Uh, but anyway, but um, in that episode, uh, we went into it. We discovered what her age was, what happened, and everything. And it was nine. Padme was fourteen, and it was not a love. Padme didn't really love him or anything. Anakin just had this cute little innocent crush on her. And Padme's like, oh, this is this nice, innocent kid. And then later, like, when she came back in episode two, she's like, Annie, my goodness, you've grown. Damn, boy, you're like a stud now. And then, but then he acted all pervy with the whole, like, uh, and then later they felt, uh, it's a whole, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, he's like, I've, I've been waiting my whole life to see her. I know. I just, <laughs> so- I like yeah like we like we said on there it's like um I've I haven't seen her in ten years master I thought of her every day it's like all right bro. yeah like all right that's a little like, like all right, all right. That's a bit <laughs> much yeah that's like, he, he was he was going into his territory not gonna lie yeah it's oh man but that's man yeah but I don't know the kid who played him was I thought he was great I thought he was fine everyone bashes on I, him I. I thought he was good. I mean, listen, Andy Christensen was terrible in episode well, he's two. The kid, the the in episode one, he's just a little kid, and most little kids, you know, they can't act. Like kids that age are not as good actors as older actors, so it's really not his fault. And it's it's a hard role for someone that little to play. I think. How but, young are we talking? Nine, ten? Nine. He's like, like, I think he's like eight, nine. Yeah, he looks yeah. younger than that. I thought, yeah, I, he was, I thought he, um, he really, because, you know, Anakin has good in him, and he turned out really innocent, and then, you know, being a slave, he really saw the badness early on in life, and that would cause a trauma, and, you know, and, and he, yeah, it's just, man, and it's just so funny how it's like this, this, like the episode one poster, you just see this innocent kid walking in the sand, and then the, the shadow is like Darth Vader, like, the most badass, ruthless leader in, like, Star Wars, in my opinion. I mean, in the canon, that's different. But in the movies, we see that this man is just... He can do a lot of damage, but... I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, had that post when I was a kid. <laughs> I remember oh, that. really? Yeah, it was on my wall. <laughs> wow. It's a dope poster. It's probably one of the most memorable posters like from, like, a movie I can remember. You know what I mean? But anyway, I feel bad because Jovan doesn't. He's like, "Who the fuck is Anakin?" I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, uh, Jovan, you there? Oh, oh, I guess he's done. Did it drop so him? Did, oh, did they drop him? Oh, wow. Okay, well. Hopefully you can get back up, but you and you, Mike will keep talking. Yeah, so, yeah um, no, we're cool. So, uh, yeah, so... I oh. hadn't watched Trilogy, the original, man, in such a long time, like, prequels, that, like, I forgot, like, all the plot points and stuff, and I don't know, sometimes I feel like people, like, unfairly hate those movies, but, like, the, like, the prequel trilogy, but uh, you go back and watch them, and they are really cheesy, and, like, the CGI has aged so terribly like when you compare it to uh i mean i don't except know, except episode three that still holds up yeah that, that's a good one I, I like i still don't think they're as bad any of them are as bad as people say like i was watching the ending of episode one where there's all those tanks and stuff and the clones it's like yo lord of the rings came out like a year after this and it's cgi is way better than this movie like, yeah, I don't. I have to admit, yeah, it's uh, there's some, like I think the 
the problem was with the VFX, like, I think the good part was the pod racing. That's when they really, like, I think really exploded it on there. And it ooh, yeah, looks that's great. Yeah, yeah. But, like, but then, like, there's the Gungans, like, Jar Jar's people, who are just, like, these janky-looking, disgusting individuals, like, that, that are, like, that are, like, mutations of society. Oh, hi, Jovan. Hi, <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say, can we um, can we give it up for George Lucas? Uh, he he successfully killed two of my favorite franchises in Indiana. He ruined Star Wars, and I don't know what the hell he wants to ruin next. But, uh, okay, um, okay, I I disagree. Indiana Jones Four was fine. I really love that one. Uh, was I'm, it? Po- I I'm popular opinion. I I like Kingdom Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I think it's better than Temple of Doom, but not as good as uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Last Crusade. Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of the best movies ever. I love oh, that yeah, movie. for sure. So good. It's so good. I just watched that two days ago, actually. I watched that actually like, three days ago with my folks. It still, it still holds up. Like, the, C- the, the, the CGI at the end with the whole spirits thing out of the yeah. Crusade is better than episode one. Yeah, it is. It's... It is from the eight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like in the eighties they didn't have the technology that we have no now, so you had to try harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have to you become more creative. Now it's just like, like you don't have it, make it back to you. Well, with horror movies, you notice it especially because like now they use like a lot of prosthetics and a lot of CG monsters, and then back in the day they had to use like. Uh, prosthetics and face paint and things like that, and I always thought and that looked it ages better and it looks better. The the whole problem with horror movies because I, I'm uh, aficionado when it comes to like horror film. Take yeah. werewolf genre for example. Um, the only good werewolf film I can that comes to my mind is oh American Werewolf in London. That's yeah, a great movie. And they that's, they that's they've good. made more werewolf films where it's CGI and it just does not work because you but, don't but, have the tangible thing. I disagree. Yeah. Twilight is amazing. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to hell with that <laughs> shit. Did you, did, you, did you hear she's writing a, a new book? Is she? Yeah. Yeah, it's like they're writing Twilight but from Edward. I was talking to my girlfriend about it. I'm like, but why though? We already look kind of like no story. Also... <sighs> Stephanie Meyer indirectly created Fifty Shades of Grey, so she she deserves like double the punishment. So, so is it, um, it, it is she is E L Grey just gonna make a Fifty Shades of Grey, but with just like Christian Grey's? I can't I can't believe I know his name. Or, or is it Jamie? No, Christian Grey. It was on TV last week, Ellie. You, you need to get your uh, Fifty Shades of Grey game up. Because <laughs> not you're not a anymore man this is stuff you need to know you know what i'm saying i forgot so. I've, i those movies are terrible i couldn't even watch i <laughs> sat through the first Fifty shades of great movie and i sat through the first twilight book and i will never never again yeah how's your uh yeah i i, I I'll, give, e- I'll give either of you money if you watch 50 shades of gray with your moms <laughs> oh i would do it Oh, don't. Cause, You're supposed to say no. No. Cause, no, because me and my mom would just roast the shit out of this movie. Like, what the hell are you How doing? Much money are you talking? <laughs> yeah, that's a good. See, like, I, I don't know, Michael. I don't know if you got the quarantine money that that stimu- that uh, that uh, on the employment, check. but <laughs> I I got I got the stimulus check. Oh, that's good. So you, so you want to use all of that up for uh, our Twilight? <laughs> our, uh, uh, I, st- st- I still got it, man. <laughs> I'm saving up. Uh, okay, you sure? Because uh, we'll be gladly do that challenge for the no, I'm just, I'm, just I'm saving up for PlayStation Five. So oh really? Out coming out. Eight of Grey, eight K. I heard they released um Final Fantasy Seven, the remastered edition, recently. I yeah, I, I didn't play it yet. Did you play it, Elliot? I don't. I haven't played a single Final Fantasy game. What an idiot! Get him out of here. <laughs> I like. Uh, okay, does Kingdom Hearts count? No, I count uh, it. I count it because it's my favorite. No, because <laughs> I played the first Kingdom Hearts, which is amazing. But yeah, uh, that's a different. Uh, that's a different pander fest. 
of Kingdom yeah. Hearts, but it's Final it's Fantasy. Story, it's still Final Fantasy in the sense of like character and and Square Enix made it, but it's like Disney's Final Fantasy. Yeah, that, that's the easiest way I could put it. However, it to this day it is Kingdom Hearts One is the only game that has made me cry at the end. <laughs> I have is the only game. How old that, that, were you? I was like... I 24! No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I first played it. So and I remember I said, spending like an hour trying to beat um, Riku in the race uh, to get the, 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 the apple to give to um, Kairi. I remember oh, yeah. restarting that game over and over and over again and I beat him. Yo, I I'm think- sorry. Sora is a simp. He does. <laughs> he does all of this, and Kyrie just s- sleeps. It does nothing. Okay, in the third one, she finally has a storyline. But this entire before Kingdom Hearts three, Sora did everything. Fought Riku with his bad freaking haircut and his hair color against this, <laughs> and and. and, and uh, I, I don't know. After, Sora, after, after Sora two, and Mordecai so, are up there. It just got anyway. so damn confusing. Like the, I, I lost track of the storyline. You it's... know, uh, I was gonna say, like you said, you said you beat him in the race at the beginning. Oh you're no, wrong? you're not supposed to beat him. I tried well, for hours. You're not supposed oh, to be. I know. I was going to say, I think more people have successfully climbed, like, Mount Everest than have beat Riku <laughs> in that race. So, I've like, tried. I've tried. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that game, anything, like, you, you can, like, read, like, the internet tapes of, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> It, it's less confusing than Kingdom Hearts' storyline. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I'm sorry, Michael. That was funny. I, I just, I just imagine like people are like starving and they're like going up like this like frosty like like giant and they're like ah! like people are dying and then like they go to the top like I did it and then the same person like a year later tries to meet Riku. He's like, damn it, damn it, damn it, I can't beat Riku. Archer circling the internet on uh, with Mount Everest looking like a dump now with all the flags that people have landed up there. I heard like there's a line to get to the top now. Yeah, there's there is. Line. Like what the fuck? Well, uh, it's like I guess climbing Mount Everest isn't isn't exclusive anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a fast pass on it. Anybody can go. Yeah, like hundreds of people climb it like a year. So, like, the activities of, like, white people with too much money and, like, like not don't know what to do with it, they've evolved to climb Mount Everest now. I don't know why. Like, you used to have to do it. Now you just have to have, like, 10 grand, and, and they'll, they'll take you up. The next adventure is climbing the Tree of Life at Disney's Animal Kingdom and not getting arrested. Oh, I would definitely do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, because I'm sure that's like one of the. Uh, I'm sure that's like a. Um, the, uh, oh, maybe you guys don't know. Do you know? I mean, uh, Animal Kingdom. Uh, I was there. Re- I, it's funny. I was. I was there like a week before everything closed down, <laughs> um, and uh, and Animal Kingdom was. Uh, they did like this thing where you can. Um, you, you guys remember Up, right? With. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so you know how they have like, the wilderness explorer, like ka ha ka ra, like that thing. They have like this travel, like where you get stickers and you see something, and you have to write down if you saw it or not. So I don't have a feeling that if you have to climb Tree of Life, that's like you get like a free like meal because of how expensive Disney meals are. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, so wait, you were there right before coronavirus? A week yeah, before? A week before. How many yeah. forms of coronavirus do you now have? I would say it again. How how many forms of coronavirus do you now have? Oh, uh, tw- uh, 27. Uh, 27. I have, uh, yeah, it, it, it's crazy how it's like, um, it, it's so crazy that this was like, like that was in March. That was like early March. And it was not that long ago. 
and it feels like it's been a year or something like that. It's really crazy. And yeah. when my mom and I were there, it was like a couple cases. It was like, oh, this shit is kind of serious. People weren't really, well, people are not really taking it seriously still. Yeah, um, yeah. But now it's at least more serious than it was two months ago. Um, but it, it was like a few people had it. We thought, like the the uh, World Worldwide Health Organization, I, I, I think that's the name, no, World Health World. Organization. Yeah, World Health. Who? I think. Who, yeah. that's right. Who. And um, it's, they might as well be called Doctor Who because they have no <laughs> idea what they're saying. And it's it's like they say one thing and then it's like, what? Like, you said it's I not infectious and that's nice. So, yeah. so it, it's another conversation, but like I don't want to get doxxed, but it it, it cause like I know <laughs> that <laughs> but it, it it's like um yeah, it's just it's so crazy how it's like I was there and like we like my mom and I like when, when we go to a hotel room, like we wipe everything down. Like mm-hmm. like yeah. since I was like well, since I was a kid. Cause we you, people probably I don't know, like people have like you know, they're, they're just like, they have like germs all over the phone. I don't think they put gonorrhea on the TV. Like, I don't know what diseases they're spreading. Like, <laughs> like I don't know what the people are doing. So you got to wipe your shit down. Possible, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think you guys should be thinking of that. Cause, uh, the next time you go to a hotel room, bring a UV flashlight. And just no, pull no, down no. the bed and just shut no. Elliot, don't do that. You'll never go to a hotel again. Don't listen to him. Oh, we just, oh, we just, uh, I just, you know what? I just, I don't know anymore. I just, I sleep outside of the, of the hotel. I do feel like sleeping on the floor would be a lot safer than sleeping in the bed. You just have to put a blanket, then you'll be okay. Yeah. And, then, and then you'll get on the bed and it's like, why is this so crunchy? <laughs> You you were at Disney. Me and Javon, we went to the Ren Fest. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You went to where? Uh, we to the okay. Sorry, the yeah. wind was talking. The wind was interrupting again, so I had to yeah. ask for confirmation. So you well, went to the Renaissance Festival. Okay, how was that? There, there's a lot of people there, and it's like we didn't even. That wasn't even in my mind, and I was like yeah. just getting over being sick and stuff too so like and we went and we there were so many people there it's like it's only you know it only comes a year so for a couple weeks and um that's been on our mind man like that, i remember um michael we were there and we were at the glass blowing place yeah. and they were yeah. telling us that the harry potter weekend they would have a lot yeah. more harry potter stuff and, and michael we were- looks over at me and goes why the hell did you choose this week to come? Lo and behold, yeah. two weeks down the <laughs> And I, I think I said we should maybe come back. Like, if, if he yeah. had the money and I would do as well, that we should come back for it. Because I, uh, I've i never done Harry Potter night there. And it's probably, probably a couple night, I'm sure. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the Universal Studio Harry Potter night? Or no, is no, this no, no, no. This is at Quiet, Quiet Waters Park in uh, Del in Deerfield Beach. Uh-huh. So they, they have a Renaissance festival, but they have themed nights. So they do like a Harry Potter night, even though that's not strictly like Renaissance. It's like, or like it's a movie, you know? Okay. So, yeah. But I it's should've... dope. That's cool. I should have went there. I, I could cosplay as Ron. Yeah, exactly. You could. You could. You. you no, you got to be the older brother. You're too tall. <laughs> oh, well, a Bill or Charlie? No, it's not the Fred. 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 Fred or George. What are the twins? <sighs> nah, I, they're yeah, not Elliot. original. Ch- Charlie went to a chocolate factory. I mean, <laughs> that's not. that's not Harry Potter, dude. <laughs> You're thinking of the wrong. Charlie's well, in Romania wrong. studying dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's so fun. I forgot about. Let me get my charger. Give me one sec. No, oh, you're good, man. I don't know. I was just thinking about how, like, I was thinking about trying the Chocolate Factory the other day, mm. and that 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 movie is. You know, people like shit on that movie. Why? And. I don't know. I think it's fine. The one with Death? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I, I, people, like, are shitting on I'm like, I don't, like, I was listening to, like, um, I remember, like, a few years ago, like, Screen Junkies had a, um, they had a, 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 um, a Comic-Con panel with, um, 
Elijah Wood and uh, Kevin Smith, and they had one of the mm-hmm. guys on there. Um, they were having like this. They had like movie fights, which I love because they're just talking about movies and fighting everything. And they said, "What is like the worst movie ever?" And uh, one guy said, I think he said, like, one of the Jaws movies, like The Revenge or something like that, which is pretty terrible. Yeah. Then Elijah Wood said, Trial of the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> oh, and then Kevin Smith said, like, oh, the Nazi war propaganda film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. And, and then everyone, like, oh, yeah. He goes, that film started a whole regime. And he's like, everyone's like, oh, fuck, this man yeah. is right. <laughs> Wow. And, and then, like, Elijah Wood goes, you know what? I can't debate that. Damn, you got me. And I was like, yeah, it's funny how you go from, like, Charlie the Chocolate Factory to, like, a, a, a propaganda film. Like, that's amazing how, like, it just spun around. But Charlie the Chocolate Factory is not, I thought it's fun. It has problems. I think it's probably, in my opinion, it is probably one of the best ad- adaptations Tated book. Uh, I got to first, first of all, I have to say it right before I defend it. It is probably one of the most, um, um, it's probably one of the best adaptations of a book to a movie, yeah. in my opinion. Because if people, if in the book, a lot of the songs like, that, that they sing are from the, from the book and yeah. Um, yeah. A- everything about it, it's just like Willy Wonka is like, I don't even know like, like how the percentage of it is, but it's, there's like a lot of stuff that's not in the movie, uh, that, that was in the movie that's not in the book, like the songs. So it's yeah. like when people bitch at it, it's talking like, this about is... the Johnny Depp, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Yeah, the Tim, the we're Tim Burton saying, one. We're saying that movie is good, but are we seeing it from the perspective after having watched the first movie? No, I'm, I'm, because it, it's different I because think for both. Like this is different because because there's something about the way it's <clears> filmed, <throat> like, <throat> like Will, like Gene Wilder, who was the guy who played Willy Wonka in the first one. Uh, it still is a better Willy Wonka than Johnny Depp because Johnny right. Depp's inspiration for for that Willy Wonka was like Marilyn Manson. I go, oh no, <laughs> I love Marilyn Manson, but that is not the right role to be inspired by him. Man, I don't know. I I think he's good. It, it it has a weird like ace. It's kind of creepy and like I, I don't know. I think people really like the original with Gene Wilder. So they they have fun. like people automatically hate like remakes and remasters a lot of the time because they the original holds like such a place in their heart. You know what I'm saying? Lion yeah. King. The Lion All, King. Yeah, I saw that recently. It did not need to be made. Well, it's basically the same movie with like realistic animals i just think that the music no. is way better in the original like not, not even that they just take it all the way up to uncanny valley yeah and can you feel the love tonight in broad daylight no no love tonight's weirder when you're an adult and you get the connotations of it but of that scene but, it's, but it's, can it's, you feel the love tonight in 12 o'clock sun? It's a metaphor, Javon. No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the only good Disney remake that I really enjoyed watching that felt different was The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book was good. However, it good. it's the same friggin' person that made The Jungle Book um, was behind Lion King. Here's the here's the thing. I I I think it's the studio. Because um, Jungle Book is, in my opinion, like there's two different types. Of, there's like many eras of Disney. I'm a old because I grew up on the classic shit, and people think the classic is like the Renaissance of Disney, which is like Little Mermaid, Being the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, so on and so forth. That to me, that's not classic Disney. Classic Disney is Snow White and the Seven Doors, Jungle Book, One Hundred One Dalmatians, mm. Sleeping Beauty, like the Pinocchio. Those are the classics. Those yeah. are the ones that like Fantasia. Like those are the ones that like. It's they're, they're they're the reason why. Well, other reasons why Disney is is what it is. But those are the movies that like got up to where it is. But like, 
because the thing about the Jungle Book is that it's a classic. It's just like this. It's based. Oh, the book is horrible. I never read it, but who? But it, it, it's a, <laughs> wait. How do you know it's horrible if you never read it? <laughs> well, because because I, I've um, I listened to Nostalgia Critic. Um, he was talking about like making that. remakes. And, yeah. Personally? No, 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 no. <laughs> I know it's very, I wish I knew the guy personally. That would be awesome. He's he's a, he's well, great. I love I his know. films. I actually agree with you, though, Elliot. I had the book. Uh, I don't remember. I think I got it for, like, Christmas or something. And uh, it's just weird, the way it's, like, structured. It jumps from, like, thing to thing. And, like, it's hard to follow. And it's written in a really weird way because it was written in, like, the 1930s or the 20s, I think. Right. The guy who wrote it is from England, I think, or something like that. And yeah, wrote, Rudyard uh, Kipling? Rudyard Kipling. I thought he was... Wasn't he... Um... I thought he had, like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't he have, like, Indian descent in him? Uh, he might have. Because I thought, I mean, I remember reading, because I know that the, the, like, the East India Trading Company, I knew there was something good. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I'm just making an educated uh-huh. guess, because I thought, I mean, I just, because I thought it, it took place in, like, um, in Africa where it took place, um. I know it takes place in Asia, and uh, obviously, but like I forgot what country. But anyway, anyway, that has nothing to do with what Michael was saying. Michael, well, please continue. Uh, the book is—it's hard to read, and it's—it's it's not that like to me. It wasn't that great. I didn't finish it, so maybe I'm the wrong person to ask. But like, I couldn't. It was just like the way it was written like took me out of being able to read it. Let me ask and, you. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you guys a question. What's like harder for you? Like, let's say you do like reading like a like a. Hor- like a frightening book or watching a frightening movie? Oh, uh, the movies are scarier because visual is like you can see it. You know what I mean? Right. And like you, like when you're watching a horror movie, like you normally can't like pause it. You know what I mean? Like where like if you're reading a book, you can just like put it down put and it like out. take a deep breath before the scary part. But I do like in like horror novels, like like if you watch like it the movie, it's it's good. It's scary. But, like, if you read the book, it goes into, like, all the backstory of it and why he's so evil and why why it's so scary for, you know what I mean, um, that they don't have time to do in a movie. So okay. I have, I can't say it's hard for me to do either one because I, I, I love the fear factor. But to, to say it's reading horror novels for me, I, I, the only one I've ever been able to, like, stick with is a series called The Last Apprentice, where you're basically um, following this guy who's does exorcism work. And he, you're following the journal of a, a person that he's training to, 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 do, to do this kind of work. That's the only one that really stuck with me that I would say, like, that would kept me up and would keep me reading it. But, um, hmm. I... Much for you brought up it, Michael, and that made me remember when I signed up for Audible. I had the choice of like, um, I think they give you a free book when you sign up or something like that, and I chose it. And I love get it. Listening. I chose it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love listening it's to the um, the audiobook version rather than reading the actual book when it comes to the, the horror. Do do you like? This is another question I have with audiobooks because. I, I re- I'm interested in, in trying out Audible because um, I'm, I'm getting back into reading books and um, I'm like, I started to read um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Uh, a great book. I, I'm reading it for the third time. Um, it, it's a great book. But um, do you, would you guys, I mean, I don't know if, if, if Michael can answer this because uh, I know Joe Vaughn just said it, but do you prefer like reading the book? Um, with the audiobook, or do you prefer like listening to just the uh, audiobook like a podcast? What do you think, Michael? It depends. Um, I think that like me nowadays, like the cool thing about audiobooks is that I when when everything was like normal, I drive. I would spend a lot of time driving everywhere, so it's I'd probably just rather listen to it audio style. But like now with everything locked down, that I have free time, I'd rather just read it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I don't think I could read it and listen to it at the same time. It's kind of like a fast reader, and I feel like it would like, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be, it would mess with like the pacing and 
be distracting probably but um i don't know like a lot of people like especially nowadays you know with commutes getting longer and stuff they listen they instead of reading books they listen to them on audible and uh-huh. in the car so it's right. it's cool to do that people like listen to their like lectures that way too like i i've uh i've, I've known students that record the lecture and then listen to it when they're driving around yeah i heard that too that's a good point yeah, but uh, ju- i've uh, done that Okay. Uh, how about you, Joe? I'm, I'm not against the whole audible thing. I do enjoy listening to it. I do prefer read when it comes to the horror genre to listen to the audiobooks rather than, than, than read the actual books. But to me, nothing actually beats holding a tangible book in my hand and turning the pages. Yeah. That, that feeling for, for, for me, because I used to read a lot like uh, back in back in high school. I, I, I was that, that kid I would get in trouble for reading in class. Yeah, like, me too. That's a, that's um, a good thing. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, but <laughs> but like, I agree too on that. Nothing can beat the, 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 just holding the book, just, just cracking, breaking in the spine. Yeah. Rather than, than, than listening to it. Because I've not gotten on the train yet of um, wind, please. Of the whole listening to podcasts and listening to audiobooks while commuting, while doing chores, I'm still a heavy music listener, or I still like ambient sound okay. over podcasts and stuff like that. If I have to like sit down and listen to a podcast, I want to actually be able to listen to it, not divide my attention and be passively paying attention. Yeah. But okay. that's just me. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe this is uh, this is the last thing we'll say, but um, yeah, like I've noticed that certain books, uh, I'll, I'll use two books. Um, I've noticed that um, when reading like uh, Corey Taylor's book, he's like the singer of Slipknot and Stone Sour. Um, uh-huh. He writes these really cool books. Like um, uh, he needs an editor because he just rants and rants <laughs> and rants, and it's like. <laughs> And I, I feel like he just talks and then like just 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 hits record, and then whatever he just stops, he just writes everything down and just sends it. And the editor's like, "Yeah, it's fine." And then, He's but like, anyway, but second, you, <laughs> except that you. I edit. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> I mean it's true. I do ramble. I have to admit. Um, but he does. Um, uh, what was it? But he, he he makes some good points. But like hearing it is not the same to me. It's like. If him, if, if, like you and I have a conversation. It's one thing, but like when I hear him saying it, like it's like it's the kind of thing where like he just like if you're rant, like you're ranting something, it it's a, you should fast read it. But when he like slows down, it's kind of throws off the pace of it. But if I'm reading like um, because uh, right now I'm reading like um essential essential tales of H.P. Lovecraft. If I read the audio audible book, then there's like some eerie music in the background. Then like the narrator has this nice like robust voice or something like that yeah. that to get the reader involved you know it's it's i think it depends on the book um in my opinion that's a great book elliot by the way oh you read it too yeah this one it, hang on it, let, me, let me get it. it it can be hard to follow hp lovecraft but this one yes oh, yeah mine has a yeah. different cup though um but i bought it years ago uh by the way, I have a Cthulhu Funko Pop right here because I'm. Because <laughs> that that's where I bought it, so they had like a deal. I was like, oh, mm. I love Cthulhu, but um, I just um, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I started read um, I started um, I started call it Cthulhu, then I fell out of place, but um, my goal is to read all the um, all like all this um soon. So like every day um, I have a goal to read um a short story every day. Well, he's there... he's a good writer. It's just that. It's written in like you know, like you said, it's written a hundred years ago, so it's it's such a weird like style. So you have to like pause and like look up the meaning of a word, right? Stuff. Yeah, that it's like, but it's really distinct. Like I don't know, they're cool books. It's like every all the monsters he created and stuff are, you know, they're interesting. He's definitely like ahead of his time. There's a book I've been meaning to try to track down but i'm not sure where i can get it or if amazon even like retails stuff like this but it's um i found it off of a youtuber named john solo and what he does he takes let's say like disney movies or fairy tale classics 
and actually breaks down the Brothers Grimm, the original stories. Oh, oh. yeah. And he talks about, he came across this book where it talks about all the archetypes of each type of story. So, like, you can fit the Lion King and Hamlet into one archetype. And that's what this book is. It, it, it's a collection of all of that. And I, I really want to get my hands on that. And, like, if I can tear into that book. But, uh. Wow. Cool. Yeah. That well, uh, oh. go ahead. Sorry, say it again, Michael. No, no, I said that sounds interesting, actually. Yeah, it does. Well, uh, I think it's a good time to sign off from here, but I don't know if you guys have anything, final thoughts you guys want to say about our lovely conversation about a, a random no. supply <laughs> yeah. of uh, movie thoughts. <laughs> nah, I'm good, man. I, uh, yeah, that's about as we can sign off. Yeah, it's fun to just talk about nothing, honestly. Yep. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good just to ramble and talk shit. And uh, yeah, I agree. Well, I agree. We're, so we're I, helping you out too, Elliot. We want we want you to keep your episodes up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, gotta I, start uploading weekly now, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I got No, I I need to hear that. <laughs> no, I've been I've been really bad with with. Uh, we were so good. Like when we started, it was like we did like a episode a week, and then. This semester kicked my ass with everything, and then it's like, okay, we do like once every like month or more. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we're we're yeah. I, I'm gonna up, I'm gonna upload this one actually, but I don't know why I have to. The audience has to hear this, but yeah. So, uh, it, so yeah. So I'm gonna get back on that. So thank you guys for listening, and uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Spotify, and all social media and Twitter. I don't know if we're on Facebook, but yeah, definitely Twitter and Instagram and um, Apple Podcasts and stuff like that so i don't know if you guys want to plug anything but you guys go right ahead that's it you can turn off all uh, right well then good it's been fun yeah, yeah i'm good all right guys thank you guys for so much and uh thank you for listening and uh stay safe out there guys don't be stupid all right all right okay this needs to stop recording there we go <laughs> Still says this